So while you were over in Europe, you called Russia a bully in a speech to the UN. I guess if you're taking that hard stance, why haven't we kicked out the Russian ambassador here? Yeah, we've called in the Russian ambassador. In fact, that happened uh, uh, fairly quickly. Sure, but why uh, haven't we... we kicked them out? Of the country. Yeah, look, with those, uh, we're certainly considering a range of other measures in addition to the travel bans, export controls, and the diplomatic engagement uh, that we have had and expressing our concern to the Russian ambassador. Sure, but what, As the Prime Minister foreshadowed in the House, there are a range of other measures which we intend to okay, be Okay, well, let's, let's get to the, those in a, in a moment. But can you tell me what's holding you back from expelling diplomats? What are you worried about? Well, no, it's, it's not about being worried. We, we have uh, incrementally and progressively tried to ensure that we're elevating our response as we're witnessing what's happening over in Russia. Uh, now that uh, Russia has invaded the Ukraine, there is a war happening. Mm. Uh, another set of responses will be developed. Okay. And the Prime Minister well, indicated that in the House. Yeah, sure. OK, apart from those other responses, what would it take for you to say... Russia, go home from New Zealand? Yeah, I, I think I'd, I'd like to consider that in a very measured way to the extent that the next range of measures provide us another opportunity to turn up the dial on Russia and to express our strong concern that what they are doing is wrong. They should yeah. de-escalate. They should get out of the Ukraine. They, and, and war is not the solution well, sure. here. Well, what is in the next range of measures that you're talking about? What else can you do? Yeah, so what we've, uh, and, and I certainly uh, uh, got a good sense of uh, the united approach uh, that European nations were taking in, in response to Russia. Uh, and so, you know, we, we're currently working uh, on a set of targeted uh, sanctions uh, because this war is unjustified and unprovoked. So, so what are those uh, and sanctions? That, and, and the Prime Minister, and the Prime Minister, foreshadowed that we are working on that approach. OK, so, look, she has foreshadowed that. But this is urgent, isn't it? It's urgent. It's happening now. The war is ongoing. Lives are being lost. And do you need to step up the process? Are you just being too slow here? No, not at all. In fact, immediately when uh, Russia uh, encroached into the Ukraine, we applied the sanctions that we did have available to us. Just last week, the Prime Minister made a statement in the House regarding Russia, and I made a similar statement over in the Human Rights Council. We have seen things escalate. We are putting uh, to Cabinet uh, a set of approaches in relation to sanctions uh, regarding Russia. Prime Minister foreshadowed that, and it is going through its process. Right, so will we see on Monday a new suite of sanctions announced against Russia? We will see cabinet. Cabinet's. It's my intention to put to cabinet a, a, an approach that could enable us to turn up the dial on Russia, be in step with other countries, yeah. because they are taking a progressive approach to applying sanctions to ensure that Russia hears unequivocally what they are doing is wrong. Uh, yes, I appreciate that is the position. So, does this mean that it is? autonomous sanctions like the uh, opposition has been asking for? Are you stepping away from following the United Nations where Russia has a veto and choosing our own sanctions? We're being outside the UN. Yeah, one of the things we've got to recognise, and this is something I, I got a, a first-hand uh, view on, is that there is a huge level of multilateral support for targeted sanctions on Russia because the war that they are currently undertaking is mm. unprovoked and it's it's unjustified and it is in breach of the UN Charter. Does, does that mean you're going to freeze assets? When we see the world assets? responding in a multilateral way to sending a very clear and strong message to Russia, that is that, that uh, in itself, I right. think, indicates just how urgent... Uh, this, this issue is so we'll and see, the global, uh, global community are, are responding. So we'll see the details soon. Also in your speech at the United Nations Human Rights Council, you said we must not let diplomacy fail. So, you know, uh, an idealistic, lofty statement. What does that mean practically? What can we do to help the diplomacy? Well, the whole point of the, whole point of the United Nations and the UN Charter was to uphold... Uh, the international rule of law. And if we say that there's no place for that, then that 
that that whole legacy of commitment towards the United Nations and promoting uh, international law has been wasted. I don't think it has, though. I think there is always a place for diplomacy. I do believe uh, that there is an opportunity still now to encourage Russia uh, to withdraw and retreat from its current aggression. In fact, uh, we are aware uh, that there are talks uh, continuing around safe passage of Ukrainian citizens to be able to exit Russia. There is always a place for diplomacy, but it really requires all parties to be committed towards an outcome that doesn't lead you down a, ro a road towards war. Okay. You mentioned the refugee 